Hello everyone and welcome back to the Kogi Game Engine series. Today we are going to tackle the logical device. Really quick though, I would like to take a quick second and thank the partners of the channel, AR Slayer and Wen Shang. The partner is the highest tier of supporter on the channel. And so I just wanted to say thank you to our partners as well as our other supporters that are listed here on the screen. So if you're interested in supporting the channel, there are a couple ways to do that now. First off, I have channel memberships available. You can access that by clicking the join button below this video. I'll also provide a link to a video that I have describing the memberships. And I also have a Patreon page, which is patreon.com forward slash Travis Roman. Thank you all very much for your support. It is greatly appreciated. So if you recall in our previous conversation, we have our physical device, which represents the physical GPU. And then we have our logical device, which is sort of the application's view of that, because it doesn't necessarily need to know everything about the physical GPU. It only needs a view of what the GPU is in order to actually perform operations like queue operations, things of that nature. So what we're gonna do this time around is we are actually going to create our logical device. So in that, we are also going to get our device queues. And then we are going to also put in a couple of notes of some things that we're going to also uh, need to set up. So let's go ahead and get started with that. Now, before we go any further, um, I know some of you will probably have mentioned by the time uh, the last video went out that we did not fill out destroy at all. Uh, and that was because the video had gone on long enough um, and I really didn't want to have it be any longer. So I'm going to go ahead and fill out this destroy now um, so that we can go ahead and move on. So one thing to note is that physical devices, since they are not created, they are obtained. Uh, they cannot be destroyed. So all we can do is release resources having to do with them. So uh, the first thing that we're going to do is basically just uh, say, hey, we're releasing the physical device resources and we're going to set the physical device to zero because there is no releasing of that, right? Uh, the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and call free on the formats array if uh, the, oops, we're going to call free on the formats array. Uh, if it exists um, to free up that memory, we will we will also do the same for the present mode array if that exists. We will make sure to zero out the memory for the swap chain support, uh, specifically the capabilities, and we're going to reset all of the indices. Um, the Q indices to negative one, which, okay. So that covers destroy for now. Okay, so creating the logical device. So after we select our physical device, we are going to want to say, okay, now we're creating our logical device. And one thing that's possible, if you recall in our Q family properties, uh, some of these queues can be shared. Right, so uh, for example, our transfer queue for a particular device could be on our graphics queue. Um, our uh, our presentation queue could also be here, right? So like uh, this presents um, the presentation is actually pr uh, supported on this queue and this queue, right? So our presentation queue is going to be shared with one or the other of these, right? And so. Um, one thing to note is that if we are sharing a queue, there are certain circumstances where we may need to know that and treat things differently. So we do not want to create additional queues for shared indices, right? Specifically, if the present shares the graphics queue, in other words, these are on the same one, then we're just gonna use the same queue for both operations, right? And we may change this later. We may not wanna do this, but for now, um, this, to keep things simple, we're just gonna do this, right? We're gonna do the same thing for transfer as well. Okay, and then um, our index count is gonna be one. And it's gonna be one because we're gonna have at least one index. And ultimately, this is basically just gonna tell us how many uh, total indices uh, we're going to have to um, get queues for. So first off, we check uh, to say, well, if it's not shared uh, between present and graphics, we're gonna increment that by one. If the 
transfer and graphics are not shared, we're going to increment it once. And then we're going to create an array of indices, the size of the index count. And then we're going to start at index 0. And we're going to say, first off, the first one's going to be graphics queue index. Okay? And then if present um, shares graphics queue, then we're going to say the next one um, indice is also the present queue index. Okay. Same goes for the transfer. Okay. So the next thing is we have these queue create infos, right? And we have an index count to say how many of these things do we need to create. And then we're going to loop through that number. And for each one, we're going to fill it out, right? So each one of these things has our S type. We are setting our Q family index to the index that was set here. Our Q count is just going to be set to one for each one of these things. Again, we may need something more flexible in the future, but I'm trying to keep this as simple as possible for now. And then if we are on the graphics queue, we are actually going to set the Q count to two. And then our flags in P next are going to be zeroed out. Our queue priority, we're just going to set to one, which is the default. Um, we can actually set priorities on queues. I'll get to that later. Um, and then um, we could set our queue priority here, right? Which is just going to be one. Okay, so we're going to do this for each one of the individual queues uh, that we have. And then uh, next we're going to make a request for our device features. Now, obviously this should be configuration driven. Uh, that's why I have a note in there, but we don't have any sort of configuration yet. So I'm just gonna hard code these things for now. Um, because anisotropy, for example, is something that um, we're saying that we're requiring, but maybe we wanna be able to turn that off uh, for performance reasons, for example. So uh, for now, we're just gonna require it and we're going to uh, say our VK physical device features is gonna be the features that we're requesting. Um, we're going to start off by zeroing this out and then setting sam sampler anisotropy to true, right? So this is just telling it when you create this, make sure to uh, enable this feature flag. So next, as you might have guessed, we need a create info. So here we are zeroing out the entire struct and setting the S type to uh, structure type device create info. And then we have our Q create info count, which is our index count. Then we have our actual Q create infos themselves. And then we have our device features and our enabled extension count, which is for now hard coded to one. Okay. That is because the only extension that we require is KHR swap chain extension name, which is this is a, um, a constant provided by the Vulkan SDK. And it just is this extension, which is VK KHR swap chain. Okay. And so we basically treat this by an array, as an array by passing it the address. Device layers are something that used to be a thing and Vulkan 1.0, these are deprecated and now ignored. So we're not passing anything here. Um, technically speaking, these are zeroed out by this, but I'm being explicit here in saying we're setting these to zero, we're not using them, okay? So you don't have to do this, um, but I'm trying to be explicit in the code here. Next, we create the device, which is a call to VK create device. We pass the physical device, the create info, our allocator, and the logical device, okay? And this is a pointer to our logical device that uh, we are going to store right here in our Vulkan device, okay? And so that is logical device creation. That's really all there is to it, right? So now if we get there, we can say, logical device created and we're done with that, okay? All right, so I think the next order of business should probably be in the destroy so that we don't forget to. We are going to, in front of the physical device, we are going to destroy the logical device, okay? And this is basically just saying VK destroy device if it exists, um, passing our logical device and the allocator and then setting it to zero. Okay, so that is our logical device. Pretty straightforward stuff, I think. The next thing that we're gonna do since we're here is we are going to actually obtain our queues. So 
Uh, one thing in our device is we have these Q indexes, right? But we actually need handles to the cues that these represent, right? So we need to hold on to these, but we also need uh, the handles to the cues themselves. So here we have a graphics queue, a present queue, and a transfer queue. And these are of the VKQ type. So they were just a handle, okay? And we add those to our Vulkan device. We're eventually gonna be adding more than this, but for now, those are the ones we need, okay? And so we're just going to go ahead and obtain those. So right after our logical device is created, we are going to go ahead and call VK get device queue. We're gonna pass it the logical device, the graphics queue index, and then pass it a pointer to the graphics queue. Okay. Now the other, the zero that's passed there is the queue index. Okay. This is basically saying within that family, um, what queue are we requesting? So we're going to hard code this to zero because it's um, the first queue that we're requesting out of there. If we were to request another queue from that family, then we would increment that to one. And we will be doing that at some point. Uh, but for now, um, just accept this at face value. Okay. And then we are actually going to do the exact same thing for our, pre our present queue and our transfer queue. Okay, and then we'll just say Q is obtained. Okay. And that is pretty much all there is for getting the cues. Now, you might ask, well, why are we getting cues? Why are we not creating them? Well, cues aren't really created, right? Cues are something that is part of the actual hardware. Um, it's programmed into the graphics card. It's sort of a simplification, but um, that's probably the easiest way to think about it. And so they're not a resource we create, it's a resource we merely obtain a handle to. And so when we're saying get the queue, we're saying, hey, graphics card, give us the handle to this thing that already exists, okay? So the next thing we're gonna wanna do is in our destroy, we're obviously going to want to unset the graphics queue as well as the present queue, as well as the transfer queue. Okay, just unset those things. Again, since we're not creating them, we don't have to destroy them either. So we unset the queues. Okay, so we'll go ahead and build this and run. And of course, now we see here that uh, we actually have some additional information. So we have our creating our logical device after physical device selected. And uh, this is just giving us more information about this uh, over, over wolf overlay. Here it's telling us it inserted a device layer for uh, Kronos validation. It also, it, um, I have OBS running, so uh, it in, inserted some hooks for OBS. Um, and then, uh, it also inserted uh, a device layer for the NV Optimus, which I guess is a driver specific thing because the Optimus is actually for laptops that have um, iGPUs available as well as dedicated GPUs. Um, and that's the NVIDIA sort of equivalent of that. Um, and then it gives us more information about this, um, this overlay. This is really annoying. Uh, it's making me actually want to uninstall that for my computer, but um, at least this, you know, we, we know that our um, our debugger is working, I suppose. So the important bit down here is logical device created and queues obtained, okay? So we know everything is working as we expect so far. Okay, so I know uh, this is sort of hitting a lot of different areas at once and because last, video, last week's video was so long, uh, I'm actually going to break this one off here because next week we are actually going to jump into commands and command pools. And that is a little bit more of a lengthy discussion that I want to tack into this video. Um, and so it'll help make all this Q stuff make a little bit more sense. All right, so anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you learned. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, feel free to throw a like on it and if you haven't already, consider subscribing. Hit the little notification bell there to get notifications when the next video in this series drops. And I will see you guys next time.